Good afternoon. I'm uh, Dr. David Cummin. I trained as a doctor in uh, Cape Town at the University of Cape Town and Hrutskir Hospital. And uh, after qualifying and traveling uh, in Europe and working in Rhodesia, I returned to Hrutskir Hospital to specialize in anesthetics. And my career has uh, been on a path of anesthetics and intensive care medicine. And I specialized in South Africa and in Australia and have uh, a wealth of experience to share with you. But what I want to speak to you about today is cancer. We know that there is limited success in the treatment of cancer. And mainstream oncology offers us highly toxic chemotherapy, sometimes mutilating surgery, and destructive radiotherapy. And so the last few years I've been studying alternative treatments for cancer because I've detected a real need and a growing feeling of patients who have cancer that they require and probably need an alternative to mainstream oncology. So I'd like to introduce photodynamic therapy. Photodynamic therapy depends on photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the most important chemical reaction on Earth. Without photosynthesis, there would be no flora or fauna on our planet. Photosynthesis is based on the fact that plants have a green pigment called chlorophyll which has the incredible property of tra trapping energy from the sun and using that energy to capture carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, combine that with water obtained from the roots to make simple carbohydrates. And the byproduct of photosynthesis is oxygen. Now, uh, photodynamic therapy uses these principles when chlorophyll is administered to patients and they are exposed to light at a very, very specific wavelength, about 760 nanometers, which is the wavelength at which chlorophyll releases the most energy. Now the byproduct of photosynthesis is oxygen. And this oxygen is used in photodynamic therapy because the oxygen released in PDT is singlet oxygen, or O1, not O2 that we breathe. Because O1 is so unstable and nature abhors instability, this molecule grabs another electron and in so doing destroys the cancer cell. It destroys the cancer cell by interrupting three very, very important intracellular components of the cancer cell. I'd like to speak about the light used in photodynamic therapy. It is uh, light in the near infrared spectrum. And it is generated by lasers, military standard lasers, lasers that give the capability of guiding missiles thousands of kilometers to take out a very small opponent. These lasers can penetrate the skin up to 10 centimeters, which means that many cancers can be accessed through the skin. Breast is a very good example of, of that. Photodynamic therapy can also be used using a needle which is placed under ultrasound guidance directly into the tumor, and a fiber optic cable is passed through the needle into the tumor and the light ap applied. It can also be applied using the very common techniques of endoscopy. Every single body cavity can be accessed by a, an endoscope. A good example is the colon, colo colonoscope, uh, the stomach called a gastroscope, and so on. And again, the tumor is visualized in the endoscope, and a fiber optic cable is passed down 
the endoscope and the light is applied directly on the tumor. So what happens now is that the singlet ox oxygen destroys the cancer cells and another process occurs in the blood supply to the cancer and clots form in the, in the blood vessels and this means that the tumor is deprived of oxygen and energy substrate and this contributes to cell death. But then a very important process begins. Unlike chemotherapy and radiotherapy which inhibit the immune response, photodynamic therapy in fact promotes the immune response and the dead and dying cancer cells initiate a process where the immune, immune cells invade the dead and dying tumor to mop up the debris. These cells are called macrophages, neutrophils, dendritic cells, and this is a process quite unlike other cancer treatments. A good way to understand photodynamic therapy is to remember the story of the Trojan horse. Because chlorophyll readily passes into the cancer cell, it's like the Trojan horse entering the city of Troy. And when the laser light is applied to the chlorophyll, just like the Trojan horse, the soldiers jump out, that would be the singlet oxygen, and it destroys the cancer cells. In my intensive care career, my success has been based on my solid belief in evidence-based medicine. And there is a wealth of evidence which really shows that photodynamic therapy works in treating cancer. This evidence is in vitro, in vivo, photographic evidence, and very sophisticated scanning techniques, as well as biochemical markers. And the evidence that I have been intimately involved in is evidence that has come from Melbourne in Australia, where my colleague has demonstrated the effect of photodynamic therapy on prostate cancer with extremely good results. So the next question is, does photodynamic therapy work? And we base all of our medical knowledge on evidence-based medicine. And the evidence that we have for photodynamic therapy is solid. There's in vitro evidence. In vitro means in the laboratory where cancer cells are grown artificially and the chlorophyll is applied and then the light is applied and the rate of death of the cancer cells is counted and the results are quite outstanding. Then there is uh, in vivo evidence. In vivo means in live patients. And there is uh, uh, abundant evidence of P uh, photodynamic therapy working uh, in cancer. Uh, there might be uh, as many as 8,000 peer-reviewed um, journal articles describing photodynamic therapy. And the one that I've been mostly associated with is for prostate cancer from Melbourne in Australia. We have photographic evidence where uh, bladder cancer is photographed when the light is applied. It is clear that the tumor cells begin to break up and the red color of the tumor becomes uh, disappears. Uh, there, is, uh, there is imaging where the uh, CT scan shows a certain density of the tumor and after photodynamic therapy the, the density of the tumor is dramatically reduced. Uh, that means that the solid tumor cells have all been killed. I hope you enjoyed the first part of this presentation. Today I'd like to introduce you to the ethics 
of photodynamic therapy. Photodynamic therapy is part of a group of enterprises described as NEST, N-E-S-T, New and Experimental Science and Technology. Now the problem with NEST in medicine is you need evidence to get patients, you need patients to get evidence, and you need evidence to get patients. So it's a closed loop and jolly difficult to break. So the best way to do that is to describe the ethics of PDT. And this is based on two very important pillars. The first is open disclosure. And what this means is the doctor and the patients have a deep discussion of the pros and cons of PDT. What it is, how it works, if it works, and when it works. In addition to that, it is put in perspective with the other more acceptable methods of oncology, such as chemotherapy and radiotherapy. And now armed with open disclosure, the next pillar is informed consent. And both the doctor and the patient have to be satisfied that the patient is fully em empowered by having all of the information at his disposal. And with that, a level of trust is generated and both doctor and patient can proceed with what they do. I'd like to invite you to visit my website, which will appear on the screen. And if you wish to correspond with me, please use my email address. Thank you very, very much.